Okay. Thank you. We start out with like Christopher Columbus flag with the green crosses there. King okay. Ferdinand and uh, Queen Isabel. Okay. And you know that's what flags he would have flown on his ships when he come over uh, to North America. Okay. Then we move on to the French flags because they're part of our country originally. Uh, French flag. Flown over the forts uh, in the United States around the Went through the French and Indian War, but not any battles. Uh, it did go uh, in the Revolutionary War with uh, Nathaniel Page and his family. Okay. Then we get into the English flags, uh, Cross of St. George, uh, King's Colors. This would have been Sebastian Cabot, uh, 1492. That would have been the Pilgrims, uh, 1620. And then the next one's the uh, Red Ensign, which is an English flag. And uh, that was uh, the Queen had uh, redesigned and it flew on mostly on the ships, okay. uh, English ships. Then we get into flags of our country then. Bunker Hill flag. It's got the pine tree, which uh, back then the pine tree was where Ellie was in Massachusetts uh, for like uh, uh, militias. Hopkins, uh, who was the Commodore of the Navy, uh, presented to him by Gadsden from South Carolina. So it's kind of an early naval flag. Uh, <clears throat> then we go back down there, like the one on the end down there is, is one of our flags. It's called the Continental Colors. Um, Washington carried that or his unit did. Okay. Then we come to the next three, which is Betsy Ross here, the standard, and then the uh, Bennington flag. And Congress decided to use this as a, the official flag uh, with the um, stripes or the stars in a square pattern. Okay. Like the 76 did. Um, <clears throat> the next one is, uh, so, so what's this guy here? Well, that's the Betsy Rock. Oh, okay, sorry. Yep, that's the one that, you know. It was, it was furled, I couldn't see. Yep. Uh, this is a 20-star flag. This is what have been. Um, War of 1812. Uh, no, I'm sorry, not. This is the 15-star, 15 15-stripe 15 flag. would have been uh, Star Spangled Banner was written about this one. Uh, this is a 3 by 5 The original one was 30 by 42 feet. So the stripes would have been about two feet, and these are about two inches. So it gives you some idea how big they, you know, the flag was. And, that, the, and the stars are applique on here? Uh, embroidered. That, that's applique. Is it? Oh, I guess it is. Yep. I always looked at it, I thought it was embroidered. Well, they are on most of the new ones, but. Yep. I never that's really paid attention That's quality to flag that. there. Uh, then we get then we get to our 20 star flag and that's when uh, Indiana, Ohio and I forget what the other states became states then they made the 20 star flag okay. And then the next one um, You've heard the people call our flag old glory and this yeah. was captain William driver um, It's a 24 star flag. It's when he said that he was putting on his ship hoisting it up and he said uh, uh, called it Old Glory. Um, also a thing with it in the Civil War, the Confederates wanted to get this and because it... Uh, oh, this was the one that was in the quilt? Yes. Yep, he sold it in the quilt when they come through looking for it. So, good. Hey, you know that. Yeah, I know, I know I know a bit of history. So, yep. <laughs> they were looking for it and it was on his lap the whole time. Yes, yep. Um, okay. Then you're all the way down at that end is the Green Mountain Boys, uh, uh, General Stark, uh, New Hampshire, Revolutionary War flag. 
Uh, this one here uh, will feel to heaven. It's called Washington's Cruisers. Um, that flag was, we didn't have much of a Navy and um, uh, Washington bought and paid for outfitting six schooners and he knew that the British Navy was far superior to ours so that's why he appealed to heaven to ask him for God's help. Uh, the pine tree is in the rallying point back in the Revolutionary War from Massachusetts area. Uh, and actually the pine tree goes back further with an Indian tribe uh, that helped, actually helped, they worshiped the pine tree and it actually helped the uh, pilgrims in 1621, 1622 survive the uh, starvation of them, so. Okay. Um, I, uh, people call this the Ben Franklin flag. Again, we didn't have much money. Uh, so wealthy Philadelphians got together and, and outfitted a cavalry unit. Now, would that have been painted on that originally? That was painted. Originally, it was a painted flag. Okay. So, my next one is kind of a favorite of mine. It's called the Syrupus flag. Um, Captain John Paul Jones. Uh, his ship was the Bonham Rich Richard. I'm told I was pronouncing it wrong by someone that served on the Bonham Richard for the, the current Navy. Um, okay. <coughs> he was in a battle against the British ship, the Serapis. Uh, his ship was sinking, had so many holes in it, the cannonballs was flying through. Um, the mast was gone, the flag was gone and the British captain yelled over, are you ready to surrender? And that's when he said, I have not yet begun to fight, uh, which he actually won the battle. Uh, he sailed to the Dutch Indies. Uh, back then, if you didn't have a flag on your ship, he was considered a pirate. The British wanted him so bad because he caused so much problem with British shipping and that, that uh, they wanted him turned over to him so he'd get him out of the war. Uh, he, the Dutch Indies didn't want to take and um, take sides really so they made a flag up and this is what they thought our American flag looked like <laughs> which wasn't but they got their information from France okay. on, on that so uh, so it's a tricolor it's just not exactly not exactly but he flew it on the ship the rest of the Revolutionary War <clears throat> and this one I say is one where it tells you never give up because you yeah. may win <clears throat> this is George Washington's Headquarters flag. Whenever George was in, he flew this to let him know he was here. It's, it's still, they have one that they fly at uh, Valley Forge. And it's the Star of David. <coughs> I guess it is, yes. I didn't realize it. Yep. Okay. I know there's a story Betsy Ross told him how to make a five pointed five star in one, one cut. cut. Otherwise, they would have gone with that. Yep, you're right. So. Uh, this one here is. Uh, um, Looks like it's from the 60s. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know it says join or die. It actually comes from an article from Ben Franklin in 1751 uh, where he was trying to convince the colonies to band together. Is that the proper colors on it? Ooh, that I don't know. I know the design is old, but I've never seen it in that color scheme. I don't scheme. know if it is on that. Uh, I'd have to look. That's almost a neon. Yes, it is kind of. It's some of the fuchsia and some of the some of the flags that you can get now are actually probably a little bit different. But my thing is, I, you know, try to get them as much. But and I assume this would have been painted too. I uh, yes, yep. Okay. Yeah, that's nice. Oh, we can start back here. Yeah, I guess. let's just start back here. Well, um, Civil War, Bonnie Blue. Oh, that's the bump. Okay. But it has. So, who carried this again? Uh, early in the Civil War, and I'm not sure what units would have cover, uh, carried it. But Which side? The uh, Confederates. Confederate. Okay. It was, it's a Confederate flag. But its early origins, or origins, is back 1810, uh, in a Florida unit uh, would have had this. Prior to about what 40 years prior to the Civil War yeah and I'm told also that uh, Texas kind of took this because of the one star and someone said something yesterday about the uh, Mississippi flag took some of its origins from this flag can't even picture Mississippi flag right now no, I can't either um, 
you've heard of Fremont, Indiana, Fremont, Ohio, yeah. Fremont, Pennsylvania, Fremont, California. Uh, this is General Fremont's flag he carried back in the 1840s on his expedi expeditions out west. And his wife uh, made and designed this flag for him to carry out there. That yes. eagle is certainly a famous design. Yeah, and it, and it would have been a sewn flag and not printed like this. <clears throat> uh, we get to, to the Alamo flag. Um, this is, uh, remember the Alamo. Originally it would have had the uh, Mexican coat of arms in the center, but the Texans had an agreement with them um, back in 1824, and they were trying to remind Mexico that, hey, we had an agreement with you back then, uh, but this is how the uh, Alamo got started, or the Texas Revolution. Yeah. Uh, th they have another one that I didn't put up today, and it's got the cannon on it, and it's white, and it says, come and take me. That comes from Gonzales, uh, Texas, and the... Uh, Mexicans gave them a cannon to protect themselves from the Indians, and then they wanted the cannon back, so they made the flag up, come and take it. Yeah. Uh, next one is a cavalry flag. Um, General Custer would have been carrying this. Um, so it's, uh, you know, what they would have carried from, they were allowed to carry a flag about the time of the Civil War. Uh, they were one of the last units to be allowed to carry a, a flag like this in the battle. And it's a pennant. And it's, yeah, it is. Or a swallowtail. So, uh, next one <coughs> is Battle of Lake Erie. Don't give up Don't the ship. Don't give up the ship, and it's uh, Commodore Oliver Hazard Perry. Uh, he made it in honor of his friend Captain Lawrence, who was killed in the naval battle off the New England coast. Uh, he actually named his ship the Lawrence. Uh, the last words of Captain Lawrence to his men was, don't give up the ship. <clears throat> so he made this in honor of his friend Captain Lawrence and then flew it on his ships. And the last one is more from our area. Uh, I shouldn't say more, it is from our area. Uh, Anthony Wayne. Uh, hey, it says A. Wayne, Commander-in-Chief. Yep. So is that his headquarters flag, or what is no, it? No, this was actually made up to uh, Washington. George Washington authorized him to make this up for uh, the Treaty of Greenville, where he gave these flags to the chiefs of the tribes that was there. Uh, one of them was that we, that we actually have that flag was from uh, Chief Sh uh, Shimakowitz. Shimako Shimako-ish. So uh, that's over in the Indiana Museum. Uh, it's the only one left that they know of, but this would have been with General Anthony Wayne. So, any other questions? No, that's that's pretty uh, pretty <clears throat> definitive, really. Yep. Yeah. You know, I found myself having to, you know, learn each flag, learn some of the history behind it, some of the history behind the people that that were involved. You know, like Anthony Wayne, some of the things he had to do and. And that, so and that, John and that, Paul Jones. And that's a revolutionary. Yes. So, so why is there a heart inside your coat there? I know you're going to ask me. I don't know. I got to find out why it is. So that is authentic. Yes, it is. Hmm. That's uh, interesting. Shoes. You can wear them on either foot because they don't matter which way they go. So okay. I always put the spikes in for the hooks. Okay. Um, stockings. And then the breeches, his pants. So. Yeah, well, thank you. Thanks for and, talking to me. Yep. Thanks for coming out.